Here's your Alabama WX with a video for this Sunday, August the 20th. I'm meteorologist Bill Murray. Historic day today, 1969, the remnants of Hurricane Camille sprang back to life over Virginia, causing as much as 31 inches of rain overnight, 153 fatalities in Virginia, as we had a second disaster from Hurricane Camille. That was back on this date in 1969. History being made today, not in the Atlantic with a hurricane, although the Atlantic is springing to life it's a Pacific hurricane, Eastern Pacific hurricane, uh, Hillary, uh, that will make landfall on the Baja uh, later this afternoon and uh, move up into Southern California. If that landfall is delayed at all and pushed any further to the north, it could actually landfall in Southern California, making it the second tropical storm there since 1939. So uh, that area has been under tropical storm watches and tropical storm warnings for the first time in its history since we've been doing uh, modern hurricane forecasting and warning. And you can uh, see as I record this late on Saturday evening, uh, the storm uh, is gradually losing intensity, as one would expect, uh, encountering increasing shear and, of course, certainly much cooler water temperatures. Uh, and then as it moves over land as well. But it still could bring tropical storm force gusts uh, to um, parts of Southern California. This is from the National Weather Service in San Diego. Uh, peak wind gusts expected. Um, probably in San Diego, they're going to see wind gusts over 30 miles an hour. Um, out in uh, Palm Desert, uh, those wind gusts could probably reach uh, something on the order of 40 miles an hour, Palm Springs, Palm Desert. Um, you know, three to five inches of rain. Uh, the Los Angeles area could uh, even pick up uh, three to five inches of rain and some wind gusts over 25 miles an hour uh, later tonight. So we'll be watching uh, the progress of uh, Tropical Storm Hillary uh, throughout the day. Of course, this could lead to some tremendous flash flooding. And uh, the Weather Service in uh, San Diego also showing these rainfall totals uh, there in the mountains, uh, especially east of San Diego. Uh, some of the rainfall amounts are going to be 5 to 10 inches uh, in that system. Uh, up in the San Gabriels, perhaps 5 to 10 inches there north and northeast of Los Angeles. And, of course, we've got lots of burn scars out in this area. That uh, uh, that would be a, a terrible situation. Lots of flash flooding, catastrophic flash flooding is possible as Tropical Storm Hillary uh, moves inland. Now, we've got other stuff going on in the Atlantic as well. This is the um, this is Tomer Berg's uh, excellent site showing all the areas of invest uh, and disturbances over the Atlantic. We'll start out one by one. Tropical Depression Six formed uh, about 850 miles east of the northern leewards or the northern uh, Lesser Antilles uh, yesterday afternoon, or really today as I'm doing this, probably tomorrow morning. It'll be yesterday as you watch it. Uh, but this system is going to. Um, uh, be very short-lived and weak and probably uh, becoming a remnant low by Monday. It does not appear to be a threat to anyone. We'll be watching it, though, just in case. This system here moving through the uh, windwards tonight um, is probably our next tropical storm. It will strengthen as it gets over the Caribbean. Uh, it'll make a sharp right turn by Tuesday, uh, move across Hispaniola, back out into the open Atlantic. It could become a hurricane then, but it gradually will begin kind of edging back to the west. And by the time we get to, you know, late in the week, Thursday, Friday, we see a big over-the-top high-pressure system up here. Could it push it back into the east coast of the United States? Uh, stranger things have happened for sure. Uh, this system right here has a high probability of a development, according to the uh, Folks, the Hurricane Center will see that probably will become a tropical storm. So we could, well, we could pop two tropical storms here pretty quickly. The system out in the uh, eastern Atlantic probably doesn't have as good a chance. It's going to recurve and turn to the north as we see some weakness develop over the Atlantic. Now this is a system that's got our attention right here. Of course, this is uh, moving through the Florida Straits. Uh, as I record this, uh, air disturbed weather It's going to slowly develop as it moves off to the west, but it will be pushed to the west, steered by this huge heat ridge that covers much of the United States. And uh, by Thursday or Friday, it's going to be approaching the Texas coast. I think we've got a chance for this to become one of those close-in development storms, probably a tropical storm only. Waters, though, as you see, this is the under um, uh, the, the underlayment here is the uh, water temperatures, and you can see they are off the chart above 32 Celsius uh, in the eastern Gulf of Mexico, across much of the Gulf of Mexico, so prime for development. We'll be watching that very carefully. 
um, some chance that could be maybe a little stronger uh, than, than you know, what we even expect. Um, this is a closer look uh, at 98L, um, which is the system way out there, uh, you know, in the, uh, uh, you know, in the Atlantic, several hundred miles east of the islands. It is expected to turn to the north and uh, not become a problem for anybody. Uh, Invest 90L is the one that's moving into the leewards. As you can see, it gets its act together into the Caribbean, but it turns pretty quickly and um, probably moves across Haiti or eastern Cuba uh, before it's all said and done. Are there any other? I think that's really all the systems that we, uh, well, and Tropical Depression 6, of course, you can see that official track and it beginning to fall apart. Now, across the United States, here's the timing on the arrival of those tropical storm force winds in Southern California, the earliest reasonable time in um, uh, about 8 a.m. this morning. It uh, should be moving up and in, further into Southern California by 3 p.m. and then into the Central Valley by 8 p.m. Uh, those wind gusts that we talked about. Flash flood watch is a real interesting story, though. We've got uh, flood and flash flood watches all the way from Southern California, eastern uh, Arizona, back into southwestern Utah, Good bit of the state of Nevada, only that stripe of western counties escaping it, all the way into eastern Oregon and much of the state of Idaho. Well, could you imagine ever seeing a forecast cone of a tropical storm into Idaho? Uh, heat is the main story, the middle of the country. It's going to become the main story for us here in Alabama. I know this has been a tropical-centric uh, uh, report tonight, but um, heat will become the story. It's really going to be a very... Uh, a very boring but uh, potentially dangerous forecast for us in Alabama again as those heat uh, indices begin to approach 105 and 110 degrees by early to mid to late in the week. Now this little uh, cool front moves through uh, this afternoon. You may have seen a few clouds along it. It's now lying over south Alabama. It just gave us a little push of slightly drier air, not anything uh, cooler. Of course, it's just going to be turning hotter uh, in coming days, and we'll see these uh, we'll see these same heat advisories and potentially excessive heat warnings uh, coming back to Alabama using uh, Tomer Berg's uh, polar weather GFS depiction today. Kind of show you what's going on. This is uh, the model for um, this is the model for early Saturday morning or Sunday morning, showing the uh, hurricane tropical storm moving into the Baja. Lots of rain spreading to the north of it, all the way across Southern California, Utah, and into neighboring states. We've got this system here uh, moving into the southeastern Caribbean. It may be getting its act together. Um, this is uh, what's left of um, our little disturbance. Here's our next potential tropical storm out there, and uh, we've got one even further out. But you can see that system moves into California. Here in Alabama, we're high and dry. Uh, this is, uh, you know, this afternoon, not a, or as uh, they say now, nary a shower in sight. Um, thanks to Jen Nairmore and our friend Brian Busby talking about that uh, this past week. Nary a shower in sight, and the temperatures are going to be warming up. Uh, as we get into Monday, we'll see high temperatures uh, probably uh, back into the um, upper 90s, uh, 95 to 98 degrees in most spots, those heat index values. We'll be approaching 103 in some locations. As we get into Tuesday, still an area shower around. Uh, we go into the afternoon hours, high pressure larger in charge. High temperatures approaching uh, 95 to 98 across uh, central Alabama. Those heat index values, though, are going to be approaching 105 to 107. As we move forward into Wednesday, still no showers. Got this uh, uh, disturbance, you know, moving across the Gulf of Mexico, surge of moisture there. Um, this is uh, Tropical Depression 6, potentially redeveloping, uh, probably Hurricane, Tropical Storm and Hurricane Emily by that point. And we've got the two other systems out in the Atlantic uh, that'll be moving along. High temperatures around here on, um, you know, on uh, Wednesday are going to be uh, around 100 in many locations, probably around 96 on Thursday. Those heat index values both days, though. Uh, getting into the 105 to 110 range. We'll have to watch that very carefully. There's probably Emily uh, potentially uh, moving on up and out at that point. Uh, we've got the first system moving away, this next system moving out, and um, just looks like uh, we don't see anything there out of that Gulf system. So, you know, that's uh, that's going to be interesting. Uh, there it is, moving on to the, you know, moving on to shore by early Tuesday, Monday night, and Tuesday. We'll be watching that to see if it develops into anything, 
And uh, you can see the other systems just meandering along. Now, by the time we get to Saturday of next week, uh, the ridge is going to break down. Low pressure developing over the eastern United States, and as it does, we may see another frontal system. Showers and thunderstorms could return to our forecast. We'll call for a slight chance of those. It'll still be hot, though. Uh, high temperatures in the 90s again on Saturday so as uh, some exceptional heat, uh, as the exceptional heat continues. Now, I wanted to go back and take a peek at uh, the temperature I had pulled up for Thursday. Um, I've got to adjust that. I said 96 on my initial run, but that needed to be changed to 100. I think we'll be at the century mark. Wednesday and Thursday, quite possibly Friday, and um, might be approaching it again uh, on Saturday as well. But as we get into the uh, second week, looks like a little front moves through. We get a couple of dry days, and then we move back into a, a slightly wetter pattern. This is 72-hour uh, precipitation uh, from the from the uh, WPC showing nothing over Alabama. Uh, we don't, we're not going to have to deal with any precipitation. It's going to be a quite simple forecast for the next several days. But as we uh, dig into the southern or southwestern United States, this is Furnace Creek, that area in Death Valley, 4.3 inches of rain over the next 72 hours. Folks, that's an entire year's record. As a matter of fact, it's double their normal average rainfall. And it may exceed in just 72 hours or less their uh, all-time seasonal uh, record, which is only 4.73 inches. They've never had more than 4.73 inches of rain in a year at uh, Death Valley Furnace Creek. And they may get that just in the next two days. So uh, we're going to be watching that very carefully. Here's temperatures off the National Blend of Models. Yeah, just kidding. This is Austin, uh, Camp Mabry. Troy Kimmel, our friend on Weather Brains, is just frying out there. Uh, they've had an amazing uh, 20, 40, 43 days, 24 days in July, 19 days so far in August, they've been above 100 degrees. And that's far and away a record. The former record was um, was um, 27, I think. Uh, you can see here, folks, they might not go below 100 for a high uh, for the foreseeable future, for the, even before the end of the month. So it's quite possible that at the end of the month, their streak could be standing at 53 days, smashing, almost doubling the all-time previous record for consecutive 100-degree days uh, in Austin at Camp Mabry. So now, just uh, just kidding there. Uh, that's all real stuff there. Here's the temperatures off the National Blend of Models for us uh, at Birmingham, calling for 94 today uh, on Sunday, 96 on Monday, 98 on Tuesday, uh, up into the hundreds Wednesday and Thursday. Then we uh, back off to just a tiny bit below the century mark on Friday and Saturday. Then a little better as we get into that following week. Temperatures fall just uh, a tad below normal. It's a big trough develops uh, over the eastern United States. And boy, we will take it. Weather Brains Weekly Netcast. It's all about weather. Dr. Sally Potter will be talking about impact based forecasts and warnings from her office in New Zealand. We'll be talking New Zealand weather and be talking about how we communicate uh, risk and severe weather and other types of weather information more effectively. Weather Brains, you can get it wherever you consume your podcast. See, uh, watch it at weatherbrains.com or live while we're recording at Monday night, 7 o'clock on YouTube at uh, youtube.com forward slash weatherbrains. Watch your weather video for this Sunday, August 20th. I'll have all the hot notes on the uh, blog, a complete uh, rundown on uh, what's going on in the tropics all day today. Going to keep us kind of busy. Fortunately, no severe weather to deal with. I'll be here next Sunday. Scott will see you next Saturday. James will have two days all week. Tune in for all those and check me out next Sunday. As I tell you, as I always do, keep an eye to the sky because you'll always have something fun to look at.